Well, hello everyone and uh, welcome. Um, I'm Dr. Bruce Morgan, the Executive Director of Research and Clinical Support here at Art Optical. And on behalf of Art, I want to thank you for joining us tonight for the kickoff session of uh, this exciting four-part Specialty Lens Education Series. Uh, before we begin tonight, I just want to bring to your attention the chat box, which is about halfway down the screen on your right there. And uh, we want you to please use that chat feature to submit questions that you might have throughout the presentation. And, and we'll do our best to answer a few of those questions uh, toward the end of the session. Uh, but don't be shy with those. Uh, we want to be sure you get all the information that uh, you're looking for. So even if we are not unable to respond tonight uh, to, the, to your question, we promise to answer all those questions in a follow-up communication. Okay, with that being said, let's get started. It's uh, my pleasure to introduce our featured presenter for this entire series, and that's Dr. Stephanie Wu. Since graduating with honors from Southern California College of Optometry and completing a cornea and contact lens residency at the University of Missouri, St. Louis, Dr. Wu has spent the past 10 years focused on the management of irregular corneas with specialty contact lenses. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry and the SLES and the owner of the Contact Lens Institute of Nevada, a practice that is solely dedicated to custom contact lens services. So tonight, she is going to share her insight on how you too can differentiate your practice with specialty lenses. We hope you enjoy the presentation. And now to you, Dr. Wu. Well, thanks, Bruce. Uh, that was a really lovely introduction. And thank you so much to Art Optical for asking me to be a part of this very special series. I, um, I, I love specialty contact lenses. It's such a passion of mine. And it's, uh, it's such a pleasure to be with, your, with you tonight. So thank you so much for joining. And tonight's topic is going to be about differentiating yourself with specialty contact lenses. Just a really quick overview, um, even though Dr. Morgan did a great job explaining just kind of a little bit about my background, but I always like to just kind of educate people of kind of how it all began for me. So after I graduated from optometry school, I completed a, a cornea and contact lens residency, and then I went back to my hometown in Arizona, which is only about 50,000 people. And this practice was just traditional private practice, so lots of eye exams, soft contacts, glasses, ocular disease, pre and post ops, things like that. And I really, really, really wanted to integrate specialty contact lenses into this practice, even though at the time there was nothing. So I talked to the business owner at the time and I said, hey, this is something that I was residency trained in. How can we get this into our practice? And it was a real challenge because not only was this practice over 25 years old, it, um, it didn't have any sort of specialty lens structure at all. So I kind of had to figure it out um, on my own and, and with the help of, of some amazing staff members and I'm so proud to say that we were able to grow the specialty lens population from essentially zero patients to over a thousand patients within a five year period. So that is an accomplishment I'm, I'm very, very proud of. Um, and, and something that if you're thinking right now, you're sitting in your chair and thinking, well, um, you know, I just, I have a regular practice or specialty lenses are not a part of my practice right now there is absolutely a way to integrate this into whatever practice modality you're in. So I'm so, so happy to share some of these experiences with you and hopefully you can take this into your own practice. I, I present a lot of lectures on the topic of specialty lenses. I, I am an author to a lot of different publications and I recently started the Contact Lens Institute of Nevada which is in Las Vegas. It opened at the end of January of last year, 2020. And it's a, it's a clinic that is completely dedicated just to specialty lenses. I don't practice primary care anymore. I don't have an optical. 
And I also don't take any insurance. So very, very niche practice. Happy to chat with you guys afterwards if you guys have questions about the clinic. Uh, but another amazing accomplish accomplishment that I'm so proud of. Um, I'm also the founder of Wu University, which is an educational array of resources for optometrists, optometry students, and really anybody within the eye care field looking to expand their knowledge base. Um, I'm also um, the founder of Stephanie Wu PLLC, which is an optometry coaching and consulting company, which I'll kind of touch upon more as we go through the presentation. So I kind of wanted to start this conversation this evening with just a picture of the general overview of where we're at in the industry. And I feel like there's so many posts on social media, there's, there's so many comments, there's so many emails, there's, there's so many articles out there, and it just, it really seems like it's a race to the bottom. And I really feel like this is something that we need to be aware of, and it's something that we need to ask ourselves, is this a race that we want to continue for ourselves? And that's something you have to answer yourself. So this is um, right from Versant Health. A lot of you probably uh, are aware of Versant Health. This was published last year that uh, more and more and more consumers are purchasing glasses and contact lenses online. In 2018, it was a $2 billion business. And every year, that keeps increasing. And this is something that we just need to be aware of. And you, we have to keep this in the back of our, of our minds of how are we going to handle this, um, what's in store for the future of eye care, and kind of where do we position ourselves. COVID-19 also was really eye-opening for a lot of us eye doctors, especially a lot of us that uh, uh, have smaller practices. But online glasses and sales became incredibly important during the COVID-19 pandemic. And what this research kind of showed us is that contact lens wearers that normally shop at some of the brick and mortar stores, so maybe the places that you work at, they tried some of these online entities and instead of going to those brick and mortar stores. Also, the some of these online eye exam companies and, and, and offerings also continued to increase during the pandemic. And this is something that I think we just need to be aware of because it's happening. We can't just sit behind our window and just say, this is not happening. We have to really face this head on as eye doctors and kind of figure out where we want our practice to go. What, what do we want ourselves to do as eye doctors? This is an important reality. I mean, a lot of you guys probably realize the importance of having an online presence during this pandemic. And a lot of you guys have probably added e-commerce to your website. You've added an online store to your website. You've figured out a way to get patients their contact lenses without having to come into your office to pick them up. So we really have kind of transitioned from some of the things we've been doing all along and, uh, and really switched to the focus of, of where the contact lens sales and things are happening. So, 1-800-CONTACTS is one of the biggest companies of online sales for contact lenses. And if you can see here, this is a company that was purchased uh, back in the fall of last year for over $3 billion. And that's something that I think we need to take a step back and and realize this is something that even though we have amazing representation, the AOA does an incredible job. I mean, those people are fighting for us tooth and nail, and they've really, they're really giving it their all to combat some of these illegal contact lens sales, 
um, and other issues, trying to raise public awareness of contact lens related issues and the safety of contact lenses. So the AOA, some of the state legislature, uh, local societies are, are doing a wonderful job at pioneering for us um, against some of these, these uh, the dangers of these illegal contact lens sales. But we have to realize what we're up against. A $3 billion company um, compared to a smaller entity of, of eye doctors really trying to get the information out there to uh, state legislature, federal legislature, and then the consumers. I think that it's just something that we have to consider. So this is something that is a reality. It's not meant to depress anybody. This is just something that is happening and it, it's going to continue to grow these online entities. And um, the another thing is this. Contact lenses are being sold out of vending machines in certain countries. This is a picture from my good friend, Dr. Kramer. I, I believe this was in Russia or um, maybe some other Latin country, I'm not quite sure. But I've heard from some of my friends that have traveled around the world and it's not just one country. There's multiple countries out there that are selling contact lenses out of a vending machine. So you just go up to it, plus look at the selection, see what your prescription is and what it matches up to, and you plug it in and then it dispenses contact lenses. This is another reality. This is something that is happening and it's possible that it could end up becoming even more commoditized and, and end up coming over here. Who knows what's going to happen with these soft contact lens things? It's just something that we, we need to be aware of. And this is something that I, I thought of when I, was, when I was developing this presentation and trying to think of a, of a good way to kind of relate some of the informa information. So think about if you went to your dentist and every year your dentist prescribes a toothbrush and a certain toothpaste depending on your specific dental needs. Great, so you're used to going there every year, you get your contact or your, your, your toothpaste and your toothbrush um, and you're set, maybe you go back in every once in a while if you need more. Okay, so you've done that. But now, imagine if you're at your local grocery store or your local store that you buy uh, products from and you see that same exact toothpaste, the same exact one that your dentist prescribes you. You see the exact same box sitting right there in front of you. And maybe it's a little bit cheaper than what your dentist sells it for. Ask yourself, what would you do? Would you buy the toothpaste that's right in front of you and cost a little bit less? Or what if you found it on online? What if you found the exact same product, exactly the same, and you could purchase it online? Would you really go to your dentist's office and purchase the toothbrush and the toothpaste, or would you buy it right then and there at the store that you're at or online? And I can't answer this for everybody. Obviously, everybody has their own opinions. But I think that some of these companies, like Amazon, it's a billion dollar company, maybe trillion dollar, I don't even know, it's, it's so big. But these companies exist because people rely on convenience. And we as consumers are to the point now where we want something and we want it now. And that is why it has been such a challenge for some of these brick and mortar stores, some of these smaller companies, to keep up with some of these large companies. And I am not a proponent of, a, of these things. I'm an eye doctor. I am in the trenches with you guys. I deal with illegal contact lens sales all the time. Uh, there's, I'm an advocate for optometry. I, I contribute to AOA and PAC and I'm doing all the right things and I know a lot of you guys are too. But I just think that we have to face the reality of the situation that we are in and really understand what our options are. Because everything is a choice. We can continue 
to go down this path and figure out ways to undercut some of these online competitors or purchase products that, that are different or carry other lines of items that um, these other companies don't have. And I think that's all incredibly important to, to realize and, and understand kind of the era that we live in and what the options are. I also would like to point out that the general public has no idea that not getting contact lenses from their eye doctor is affecting their eye doctor. The reason I know this is because I was one of these people. When I was in high school, I was 17 years old, and I remember seeing some ad for a big box company on buying contacts and seeing that it was the exact same product that I was wearing and it was cheaper than what my eye doctor sold it for. So when I went in for my eye exam, I asked for the prescription, I took the prescription and then I ordered it online or called it in or whatever it was back then. I had no idea as a 17 year old girl that me not purchasing a box of contact lenses from my eye doctor was affecting them and their business. So I don't think that patients are doing this because they don't care. I don't think they're doing it because they want to harm their eye doctor. I don't think that's it at all. I think that the patients just have no clue that this affects their eye doctor in this way. Because like I said, I lived this. I did this myself. I didn't know that not buying from my eye doctor was going to affect them and their business and possibly my eye health and, and safety long long term. Um, and so I just I think that we have to take a step back because it's so hard for us to realize this in the midst of us being in the trenches. It's really hard to see it from the other side. It's really easy for us to say, hey, listen, if you have the wrong contact lens, you could damage your eye, you could get an ulcer, you could get an eye infection, the fit could be off, uh, you could have these blinding eye diseases. Yes, that is so easy for us to say because we see it all the time. We also have to look at it from the consumer perspective as what is the most convenient, what's the most simple um, and, and cost effective. And if you're comparing apples to apples and when it comes to these contact lenses, you really are comparing apples to apples. If, you, if they're finding the exact same thing, the exact same product from somewhere that's faster, easier to access and cheaper, it makes sense as a consumer why patients are choosing this as an option. So I think that we need to be focusing on our talents as eye doctors. And we need to be doing what only optometrists can do. The way we're gonna do this is changing the question from why don't we, why don't we change the question from can I compete with these online companies to how can I not compete with these online companies? So think about that question. How can I compete with these online companies to now, how can I not compete with these online companies? And the answer to that is we need to discover other opportunities for new products or services, and we need to be doing things that only optometrists can do. So think about that as well. With the dentist, there's things that only dentists can do. And there's things that other companies can do with dental care, and they do that. And that's what these major companies are doing. There's really no barrier to entry with some of these things. Your neighbor next door that has no clue about the eye care field at all could open up a shop tomorrow and sell glasses or contacts. You know, if they got a prescription from a, a consumer, a patient, they bring it in, they can sell it to them. There's not a, there's, and I think that is where um, the issues lie for some of these, these uh, arenas with, with sales of, of online products. So 
we need to be doing things as eye doctors that only we can do. Something really interesting also is the contact lens event of 2020. This is uh, in contact lens spectrum. They always have this every year, um, the, this awesome article and, and issue. And this is from the editor, Jason Nichols. And it really did, COVID has really taught us that optometrists want to specialize. And, and it really taught us that optometrists have started to realize that we need to start doing things differently. And something that, that really was exciting about this last year as a whole is that specialty lenses were resilient throughout COVID. And, and that teaches us that medically necessary contacts or specialty contact lenses are very um, different than traditional contact lenses. You, it's very hard to get a specialty contact lens online. It's very hard to get a specialty contact lens fit anywhere besides a very qualified eye, eye care practitioner. And I think that's something that we need to realize. What are some of these things that we can be doing that only we can do as eye doctors? What are the products and services that we can be offering that really no one else can, can do and, and that patients can't easily access online? So let's go over what are specialty lenses. So first, specialty lenses are contact lenses that cannot be easily fit, meaning that with a traditional soft contact lens, it's relatively easy to figure out the patient's shape of their eye, their prescription, and then go to the uh, back and then pull out a contact lens that will that will probably work for a normal patient. These are contacts that are not just pull off the shelf, put it on, and, and, it's, and it's done. It's gonna require a little bit more time and knowledge to design. And that right there limits the amount of doctors that fit these types of lenses. Um, one of the most recent studies that I read showed that only 10% of optometrists actually fit soft multifocal contact lenses. That totally shocked me because it was at the time um, I was doing like three a day in a traditional like regular setting. But then I realized that when you are fitting multifocals, you have to follow a fitting guide. Um, you have to know kind of who the good candidates and poor candidates are. So there's a little bit different follow up process and things um, and troubleshooting. And so that right there limits the amount of eye doctors that want to enter into that type of uh, field. So anytime you're asking somebody to do more than what they traditionally would be doing, it's going to limit the amount of people that want to do it. These contact lenses are not easily purchased outside of your clinic. And that's exciting because they're not gonna be able to get lenses randomly online or from some big box entity. They need to get it from you, which that helps you control the quality, um, the fit, making sure they're getting the right product, making sure the lens is fitting okay, making sure that their ocular health remains intact. So, and then when I think of specialty lenses, I think of things like irregular corneas, um, myopia management, ocular surface disease. These are some of the possible candidates. This is basically for um, either like a dry eye scenario, or ocular surface anomaly, um, or an irregular cornea. But look at all these different things. I'm not gonna go over all of these, but there are tons of patients that need these types of contact lenses that are probably sitting in your chair every day. There's probably one candidate, and maybe not every day, even if it was once a week, you probably have one of these patients that has some sort of irregularity that could benefit from a specialty contact lens. Another interesting statistic, uh, if you follow up at all on keratoconus, and it's, it's something that I'm really passionate about, but keratoconus is actually more prevalent now than it ever has been. This is something that has been studied meticulously. There's tons of research going on, but back in 1986, the estimate was about one in 2,000 people has keratoconus, 
And the more recent estimate from 2017 from the Netherlands is about one in 375 people. So going from one to 2,000 to one in 375 people is amazing. And this is probably because we are able to diagnose keratoconus a lot faster now. We have a lot more sophisticated technology that's able to diagnose this condition. And then that gives us the opportunity to intervene early and manage this disease early. But if this is something that interests you at all, some of these irregular corneas, just know that these conditions are continuing to become more, more and more prevalent because of improved diagnoses. Dry eye disease or some of these ocular surface diseases are a huge part of specialty lenses. These are both my patients. So the person on the right had a tarsorophy, so her eyelid was sewn shut, and they wanted to open it, but they were worried about her ocular surface um, declining again. So we ended up fitting her with a scleral lens, and that keeps the liquid on her eye all day to protect her eye. The second patient is somebody that had an unresolving epithelial defect. So you can see she's got a lot of staining, um, a lot of coalesced areas, and uh, this patient, she's, got, she's very dry, lots of issues with redness, photophobia, and irritation, but they had tried everything. They tried um, tons of dry eye eye drops, prescription drops, and over-the-counter lubricants and artificial tears, um, oils such as um, doxycycline, um, fish oils, things to kind of try to improve that ocular surface or the eyelid environment, they tried a lot of other things like IPL and lippy flow and all these other things, but she still had this unresolved ocular surface. And so can you imagine if you've got this type of eye that's very dry, it's uncomfortable, your eye is always red, and on top of all that, you can't see because you've got all these areas of dryness. This patient was fit into a scleral lens and it has made a huge difference in her life. Again, if you've got dry eye disease, disease in your practice or, um, or you're wanting to treat more of that, specialty lenses fit in perfectly with dry eye disease. Another thing that we're finding out with, as optometrists is that dry eye disease is very prevalent and we're diagnosing dry eye more and more and more now. So if you really wanna get into the dry eye realm as well, specialty contact lenses fit in perfectly. Also, this is something that uh, is also a hot topic, and it's myopia and myopia management. So with, with myopia, it's expected that over 50% of the world's population is going to be myopic by 2050. So that's crazy. So in 2050, the, in the entire world, one in two people is going to have myopia. That's crazy. And on top of that, a lot of these patients are going to potentially develop high myopia. And we know that as high myopia progresses and, and eyeballs become longer, the risk for certain eye diseases such as glaucoma, early cataracts, uh, myopic macular degeneration, um, retinal detachments, they all increase significantly once you get into this high myopia prevalence. So it's, this is also something that's a very, very hot topic. And this is also going to become something that a lot of eye doctors are going to start integrating into practice. So if you have any interest at all in myopia management, and you want to know kind of how to implement this into your practice, this is another amazing type of contact lens to work with. Some of the benefits of specialty lenses is that Many doctors have absolutely no desire to fit specialty lenses. If you ask Art Optical and some of these other companies, you know, how many uh, doctors are actively fitting your designs, you'll be surprised at how many, how many doctors there are. I thought like every single eye doctor fit uh, gas permeable lenses, but that's absolutely not the case. So if this is something that you want to do, it's absolutely a way to stand out because not every doctor down the street even has a desire to fit specialty lenses. If you already have 
a clinic you're working in, you're able to offer a new service or product within your own current situation. So even if you're thinking to yourself, well, we don't offer that right now, it's, it's an amazing way to offer something new to your, to your existing practice. You can also help patients that didn't know there were any other options. So there's a lot of patients that have some of these conditions and they just don't know what to do or they don't know that there is a contact lens option that's available for them. You can also have less management of cost of goods. And this is something that is really important to me as a business owner. When I had my other practices, you're constantly managing frames, ophthalmic lenses, uh, uh, warranties, breakages, repairs, returns. I mean, you're, you're just constantly having to monitor all these different things, refunds and credits and all that. When you deal with specialty lenses, especially with art optical, it's, it's a lot easier. And that's because a lot of these companies have really, really good policies on warranties. And if something doesn't work out, they credit you. I mean, you're dealing with companies that aren't managing thousands and thousands and thousands of frames and thousands and thousands and thousands of accounts, and then you just get lost in the mix. It also helps to build incredible patient loyalty. Patients that are in specialty lenses will follow you and they will come and see you every year and they will continue with your care. And that's because they've probably been to a lot of eye doctors um, before and they realize that what you are doing with specialty lenses is not something that every doctor offers. Not every doctor in your area is going to want to do this. And so when you, when you do fit these types of contact lenses, patients become incredibly loyal to you. It also generates a new stream of income. In my last clinic where it was 100% of the income was from glasses and services and um, soft contacts because we didn't have any specialty contacts at all. Um, you know, that was 100% of the revenue. Then once we started incorporating specialty contact lenses, um, I think the most recent uh, update was it represented about 20% of our, of our total income. And that's a huge amount uh, for the amount of patients that, that we see in the volume. So these are some amazing benefits. So if, you're, if you are interested in specialty lenses at all, I definitely think it's something that you should look into. I want to go into some perceived barriers because I know a lot of you guys are thinking, well, but X, or yeah, that sounds good, but why? So I want to go over some of the perceived barriers that some of my coaching clients ask me about or they, they have an excuse for, and I would like to educate you on ways to kind of overcome some of these common perceived barriers. Number one. I don't know how to fit specialty lenses. A lot of you guys on this call tonight probably don't know how to fit specialty lenses and you have no idea where to start. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, there is a ton of free educational resources online. GPLI.info and sclerolens.org are both nonprofit organizations and both of them are committed to helping practitioners fit gas permeable or scleral lenses. So right now you could go on to these, uh, e uh, these websites and find a ton of archived content um, and webinars. There's also a lot of publications in contact lens spectrum, review of optometry, modern optometry, optometry times. I mean, th there's tons and tons and tons of free content in some of these major publications. Also, there's social media forums. This is some one of the best things that you can use because you are asking your peers and when you need help. So there's ODs on Facebook, there's Scleral Lens Practitioners, which is a group within ODs on Facebook. There's Business of Scleral Lenses, which is kind of a subset, just asking more like practice management questions, gas permeable lens experts. So if you have a social media outlet at all, these are ways to kind of communicate with like-minded individuals. So you can go on and say, 
hey guys, I got my fitting set, uh, now what do I do? And people will help you. A lot of optometrists are very kind and they want to, they want to help you get better. It's one of the most reputable industries for, for, for that. We're very supportive of each other. And I think you'll find a lot of practitioners want to help you. You can also do wet labs within your clinic. And I'm not sure where Art Optical is at this point, as far as with the with everything going on. But if you have a question, or you and you say, "Well, I would really just like somebody to show me," um, contact Art Optical and say, "Hey, can you either come out here and show me how to do this, or can we do some sort of a lunch and learn, or can you do some sort of a virtual meeting where I can log in and you can kind of walk me through it?" they are happy to do that these companies want to help you because the only way that they succeed is if we succeed so they are happy to help you there's absolutely no, no dumb questions i'm never embarrassed to ask art optical all my questions poor eric gets about 18 emails a day from me asking probably dumb questions so don't even think that oh my gosh they're gonna think i'm dumb or I feel like I just need all this knowledge to even per go through with it. Do not have that as a fear. I email them a million times a day, and probably a lot of the questions I ask are are, are not the most uh, well thought out. So don't ever feel like the questions that you have are dumb. You can also do live workshops at major meetings. So at Academy, Vision Expo, uh, sometimes GSLS now, uh, Vision by Design. I mean, all these other meetings, a lot of them actually have workshops on either irregular cornea fitting or myopia management or scleral lenses. So you name it, a lot of these major meetings actually have some of these uh, workshops where you can actually try these lenses on real patients. Another thing is, don't forget about the support from your team. Art Optical and any other company that you use is going to help you and they want to help you. You can contact them by email and phone and fax and website help. Whatever the way is that you communicate, they will, um, they will help you in, in any way you need. So just don't feel like you, you, you don't know what you're doing and you don't know where to start. Here's a huge list on how to get started with fitting specialty lenses. There's tons of resources out there. Here's another one I, I hear a lot. I don't have a fitting set. I don't know what lab to use. I don't know who to pick. I don't know what the pros and cons are. The great news is with Art Optical, the, I, I have done a lot with Ample Eye. It's, it's one of my most widely used lenses. And here's something that I'd recommend. If you don't have a fitting set right now, I would ask Art Optical for a loaner set and just say, hey, can I try this out? I don't want to commit to anything because if that's what you're worried about, you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars on a fitting set, which is a very valid concern, especially in the midst of, of everything going on. Um, I would just say, ask them for a loaner set and see how you like it and just see if they will um, send you one for like 30 days so you can try it. And if you don't like it, send it back. Uh, that's what I would do. And that's what I did as a resident. I would always, because I had no money as a resident, you know, you have zero dollars, probably have negative dollars. But um, I would just ask and say, can I try your lens? I'm really interested in it. That way you get a feel for the design, you get a feel for the lens itself, you get a feel for the lab and the consultants that you're working with. So I, that would be my recommendation because that I don't want that to be a barrier to entry for you. If you don't have a fitting set right now, email Art Optical immediately after this and, and ask them if you could have a loaner fitting set. Sorry, Art Optical, if that, is if you're not wanting to give hundreds of fitting sets away as loaners. But I don't want this to be a barrier for anybody. If this is something that you really want to do, I'm, they're going to find a way to help you. Another misconception is that doctors have to have a certain amount of knowledge. 
this is something that some of my coaching clients say all the time. I feel really dumb. I have no idea what to send to the lab. It's, it's actually quite simple. If you want to start getting involved in specialty lenses, a lot of times the only thing you need are keratometry values and the refraction, which everybody here, I'm sure, has a um, ferropter in their office. And most of you guys probably have um, an auto keratometer um, or, or even like a topographer. And don't be embarrassed. I can't stress this enough. Do not be embarrassed to call the art optical consultants. I call them all the time. I email them many times per week and asking for their assistance. And the reason I got comfortable was, with this is because, is because someone told me during my residency, no matter how good of a doctor you are, no matter how great you are, these companies know their lens design the best. They are the ones that put in all the effort, the time, the research. They have gotten all the information back from practitioners when things don't work and when they do work. And they're able to put all of that information together. So they are going to be the ones to help you the most. And that always stuck with me that, wow, these companies really are the experts in their own lens. So why wouldn't I call them and say, hey, uh, I'm seeing X, what do you think? Or send them a picture. Hey, this is what I'm seeing. Can you help me make some adjustments? I do it all the time. So I just wanted to kind of go through a typical scenario just so you can see what it's like working with Art Optical when designing and ordering a lens. First, I collect baseline data and imaging. So in my office, I have a topographer. If you don't, no worries. Just collect as much baseline data that and imaging that you have, and then we'll start the fitting. I do the fitting in office, and I take a bunch of images and videos. So you don't have to have a fancy slit lamp camera or video or anything like that. You can actually take a photo or a video with your own cell phone just by putting it up to the ocular. And if that doesn't seem like you're getting the right quality or you don't have a steady hand, there's really, really cheap adapters that you can look online and get for, your, for a cell phone that connect and you just put it right on the ocular and it will, and you just use your cell phone basically to take a photo or a video. So that is something that I highly, highly, highly recommend because then when you send this to the company, they are able to see exactly what you're seeing. So if I said, hmm, I'm getting some touch, I'm getting some cooling, I'm getting some edge lift, I'm getting some edge tightness, they don't really know what I'm talking about. But if they're able to see this photo or video, they know exactly what I'm trying to say. Next, you'll just do an over-refraction on top of the lens that you just had, even if it was a terrible fit. And then all you have to do is send the information to the lab and then email it or call it in, whatever the most uh, comfortable way is for you. So that was a super easy process, right? I got information, I put a lens on, I took some videos and photos, did my over-refraction, and then I just sent that to the lab. And I said, can you help me with this order? Here's all the information. Tell me what cha changes I need to make. Easy, super, super easy. The next perceived barrier that I get all the time is I don't have all that fancy equipment. Maybe you don't have an OCT. So you're like, I don't know. I don't want to fit. I don't, can't fit scleral lenses because I don't have an OCT. Or I don't have a topographer. So I, I can't fit any irregular corneas. Or, hey, you know, I want to do myopia management, but I don't have an A scan. So these are all things that, yes, eventually, if it's something that you end up doing a lot and you really dive into specialty contacts, this is equipment that you may have down the line. But it is absolutely not totally necessary. When I first started into my clinic, I only had one topographer, I had three offices. I had one topographer, so only the patients in that location got a topography. The rest of the uh, patients, I had to either do manual Ks or um, try to diagnose keratoconus with my retinoscope and, and slit lamp findings and things. 
and I didn't have any OCTs at all. So we had, so I basically had to do specialty lens fittings with just like a slit lamp, retinoscope, and ferropter. And basically that's, that's all I had. And I was very successful. And it was only until we generated a certain amount of income that we could afford to purchase some of these other things. So if that is something that you're thinking, you absolutely don't have to have all this fancy equipment to get started. In fact, here's a tip. Let's say you want to start um, doing specialty lenses, but you don't want to invest in a topographer, but you really want to have that data. So let's say you want the data, but you don't want to spend the money for a topographer. Send the patient down the street to another eye doctor or a surgeon that you work with a lot and, and have them get a topography over there and then they can bring it back to you or the, the surgeon can mail it to you or, or fax it, whatever. And you can just get the information that way. That's what I do with my myopia management patients. I don't have a big enough population uh, to support purchasing a very large axial length machine. I don't have $20,000 or $40,000 to spend right now as a new business, um, and that's just not in the budget. So what do I do? Well, I, if I wanna track their axial length, I send them to the surgeon next door who performs an axial length measurement and then sends that information to me. So that is a tip. I think it works awesome. So if you're like, I just, I don't, it's not on my budget. I can't buy any of these things. Please don't let that stop you. You will end up getting these machines if you do end up doing a lot of specialty fits eventually, but please don't let this be a barrier to entry. I want you guys to, to be able to fit these types of lenses if it's something that you really want to do. Another question, and this is such a valid concern, what if I don't get the lens order correct? The great news is, especially with Art Optical, they have an excellent warranty program. So if you say, hey, Mindy or Eric, whoever you're talking to, I'm like, I'm new, I don't know what I'm doing, I might have 20 new orders uh, within a month, what do I, like, I might have a thousand lens exchanges, what do I do? They will help you and they will get you onto a lens that has a warranty. So you can do unlimited remakes for a certain amount. Um, consultants are excellent. They're all highly trained. They're all highly trained with all of their lens designs. So you're always gonna be in good hands when, when you call. And you've got unlimited support, meaning that I could call Art Optical 20 times a day and email Eric 80 times a day, and they're never gonna say, um, yeah, you're emailing too much or you're calling us way too much. Uh, we only are going to accept five phone calls a day from you or something like that. So these, these companies, especially Art Optical, incredible customer support. And that is something very important when you're dealing with anything specialty lens related is finding a company that has five star customer service. Another thing that I always like to mention is there's not much risk involved because if for some reason the patient doesn't succeed with the contact lens fitting, you can always return the lens for a certain amount of credit. So it's not like you pay for the lens because a lot of doctors think this. I talk to them all the time and they say, well, let's say I purchase a lens for X amount of dollars and it doesn't work and I do all these exchanges. Now I'm in the hole, however much this money, and then I'm just out that money if the patient doesn't want to proceed. But that's not true. The, the great news with these warranty programs is that you can get a credit if the lens doesn't end up working out. So the risk involved as far as the material side of it is very low. Now the service portion, you know, all your time and energy, you know, that's something that you have to figure out as far as your fees go, but the actual material itself, not, not anything I would be concerned with. Some of these things are practice management related. So a lot of, a lot of uh, my clients will uh, email me and they'll say, I can fit specialty lenses. I feel really comfortable. I've done all the workshops. I've watched all the webinars. I fit a few patients, but I don't know how to integrate specialty lenses into my existing practice. I don't know how to schedule these patients. Do I block out an hour? Do I block out two hours? What happens if I don't have any time and their lenses have arrived and I'm three months booked out? Now what do I do? 
Um, how much do I charge? Do I charge for my time and materials separately? Do I do it every visit? Um, and how do I educate patients on this new technology? How do I let people know? So there's lots of different um, practice management tools out there. The GPLI has a professional fee calculator under the resources tab. So if you go to gpli.info resources and then go to the professional fee calculator, you can kind of plug in your fees. I've developed one myself um, because the other, the GPLI one is awesome if you know all of your numbers, but like in my other practice, we had terrible metrics for everything. I mean, we were on paper charts, if that tells you anything. So we didn't have a ton of metrics to go by, so I didn't know how to fill in a lot of the information. So I developed my own calculator. If you just go to drstephaniewood.com and in the very top right where it says calculate my fees, there's only like six boxes you have to fill out and then it will kind of tell you kind of what you might want to consider charging. So just a couple free tools that you can use if you're like, I have no idea what to even charge. There's also a lot of coaching and consulting programs. And a lot of people I think make, this is such a great quote, many people make the mistake of saving money by wasting time. And I can for sure tell you that I do that. I do that all the time. I am constantly working on things that I should not be working on, that I should be paying somebody else to do because it's a total waste of my time. I'm, I'm, I'm still not good at it in certain areas of my life. But there, here's a few different things that, um, that happen. So Power Practice is one. Um, they've got weekly podcasts. They have really great guest speakers. They even have like a consulting program where I think they help you um, integrate like things into practice. Supercharger practice, I've never been, but I've heard amazing things from a lot of my, my friends that have gone. Um, that's offered once a year. Uh, the Scleral Consultive Initiative, another two amazing doctors, uh, Dr. Jeff Sonsino and Dr. Mile Brujic, good friends of mine that do like all day events. And then Wu University, my, my company, uh, which we've got different events based on your needs. We're doing like virtual day long and weekend long things. So I have no financial interest in the first three companies. These are just ones that I find either really helpful or people have told me are very, very helpful. Um, and then of course I do a financial interest in Wu University. Last thing that I want to kind of talk about is Art Optical wants to help you. I can't stress that enough because there's so many people that think um, that it, they, they feel dumb asking questions or they think they have to have a certain knowledge base. But like I said before, this company is not successful unless you are successful. So they want you to succeed. So never, ever, ever feel like you can't reach out to them for help. And if I can do it, you can too. This is not to be a cheesy line and, uh, and just some word of encouragement. I genuinely, in my heart and soul, believe that you can do this. If I can start a clinic in Jan at the middle, in the middle of a pandemic, open up in January, close again in March, go through this whole thing that's and it's a it's a cash only clinic with just specialty lenses, and I can still be profitable in this the craziest year ever. I am positive that if you have any desire to do this and incorporate this into your practice, that you can you can absolutely do it. So I will take any questions. Um, if you wanna get a hold of me afterwards, please reach out to me. Uh, my website is drstephaniewu.com. Here's my email, drwu at clinevada.com. And I do also have Instagram and Facebook where I post interesting cases and things, um, but, yeah, Dr. Morgan, if, if you have any, any questions, I'd, I'd love to answer any. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Wu. That was, uh, that was an excellent presentation and very, uh, you know, cohesive and, and pretty comprehensive, apparently. We don't have a ton of questions, but I, but I would want to um, piggyback on your comment about our helping individual offices. Uh, we absolutely are open to that per request and, and you know, do a lot of that um, basically based on the needs of the practice. And so, uh, as you said, ARP will do their 
their darndest. We will do our darndest to uh, to help practices get phased in uh, to specialty lenses. I had a question for you though. Was you know how common is it to to get referrals uh, from these specialty lens patients? Uh, is it something that's going to you know all of a sudden you're going to get you know hundreds of these coming in, or you're going to get two uh, a month, or do you have any idea kind of what the what the rate is of, of growing your specialty lenses in your practice? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I would say that once you decide this is something that you want to do, you'll find most of your the patients within your own clinic. So you'll start looking at the patients differently and asking different questions to identify who would be good candidates. So for me, in my clinic, I saw a lot of patients that had RK scarring, and those were some of the patients that I would identify as, hey, you know, you're only seeing X in your glasses, and you complain that your vision fluctuates, and you have like several different pairs of glasses around the house. Would you be interested in a contact lens option that would improve your vision and maybe help with your fluctuating vision? So I basically took the patients that were already coming in to see me and transitioned those patients into specialty lens patients. On the myopia management side, same thing. The parent would bring in their in their in their child and they're like, they can't see the board at school. Okay, great. Do the uh, exam. They've got uh, they they're a minus one. Then we start going through there's options. They can do glasses, they can do soft contacts, or we can do myopia management. What's myopia management? Then you look, go down this other kind of path. So I think majority of the patients are going to come from your own clinic at first. And then you can also start doing marketing, whether it's digital marketing, um, social media, advertising, Google AdWords, what have you, and then getting the word out there to other practitioners that this is a service you now offer. That will also help to build up the referrals as far as specialty patients. So I would say in the beginning, I probably had like maybe two specialty lens fits a month as I was trying to integrate this into the clinic because once again, we didn't know what we were doing and we didn't know how to schedule the patients. We didn't know how to bill and code for these things. So it was kind of a work in progress. Then that kind of ramped up to, okay, now we're doing them once a week. And then, all right, after like um, maybe a couple years and it was like, okay, now we're doing like three a week. And then it ended up that, okay, now we have like five a day. So it ends up becoming kind of this snowballing because that patient tells this one. And then if the other doctors that are referring to you uh, see that their patients have done well, they will start to refer more. Very good. All right. That, uh, that, uh, that makes a lot of sense. And, and I think uh, that's what I have seen uh, over my career and how practices have developed this, you know, over time. It doesn't have to be this flip a switch. Mm -hmm. And you're completely different. So um, that's that's excellent advice. And um, I think with um, you know respect to everyone's time, I think we're we're about the end of our uh, event tonight. But I wanted to uh, thank Dr. Wu, and also you know thank everyone uh, for joining us tonight. And just to remind you that uh, there are three other sessions uh, coming up over the next three months. And uh, we'll, hope, you know, we hope you join us for those as well. And the next session is March the 10th. And Dr. Wu at that time will be focusing on uh, ortho K practice management. So if you haven't registered to attend, you know, this is a good time to kind of get that done uh, so that you don't forget. And that is the website where you can register that link down at the bottom of the page. So thank you again, Dr. Wu, and thank you everyone. And uh, Stay safe and healthy and hope to see you next time.